Housing affordability is at the lowest level that it's been since 1984. That's creating some really interesting dynamics in the real estate market. As interest rates have continued to rise and home prices have continued to go up, it's made home ownership a little bit less attainable for the average American. Let's find out what the impact has been here in Greenville County. Hi, I'm Evan Whaley, your favorite Greenville realtor. As I mentioned, housing affordability is at its lowest level since 1984. What they look at on the affordability index is they really measure a couple key factors. Where are interest rates? What are home prices? How much does someone need to put down to purchase a home? And what do wages look like? And they wanna make sure that they factor in a percentage of that income. And what they're looking at is right now, about 80% of the US households are able to actually purchase a home. Again, the lowest level since 1984. Thankfully here in Greenville County, we've actually seen those levels be a little bit higher since our home prices are not as high as the national average and our wages tend to be a little bit more in line with what the national averages are, making it to where less of your income is actually needed to purchase a home. What I decided to do is evaluate each individual city and see how the sales compare on an average price from 2023 to 2022 to see which cities are growing at the fastest rate and which cities are not growing as quickly so that if you are a seller or someone thinking about purchasing a home, you know what areas are best for you to be looking in. When I broke all this data down, I was actually really shocked. One of our cities here in Greenville is actually on the decline. I'll talk about that near the end. We have several others that are on a massive increase, far exceeding what the market average is. If we look at home price appreciation in our entire market, we're at 3.2% for the average price as far as October of 2023 to October of 2022. When we break it down per city, there are three cities that are doing extremely well. They're seeing over 7% home price appreciation from 2022 to 2023. Those three cities are Piedmont, Taylors, and Easley. All three of them well above 7% and two of them almost at 8%. Those three areas have seen massive growth in the last few years. When we look at Taylors, there's been a lack of inventory, especially resale, and there's not a lot of opportunities for new construction, and that's really been pushing that market pretty significantly. And it had some of the lowest days on market as well, so Taylors has been a phenomenal place to own a home. When we look at Piedmont, there's been so much new construction and development happening in that area that's really pushed those prices up. Easily, same thing. They're developing their own version of the downtown called the Silos, which has really made a dramatic impact on what people perceive that area to be. And they've had a lot of new construction and just a lot of money and wealth moving to that area in general, which has really increased home values. At 6% plus, we have Greer and Greenville. Now, I can break this down into different parts of Greer and different parts of Greenville and they'll be higher or lower, but I just did the full city view just to give someone an idea. Both of those cities are seeing tremendous growth and are double what our market overall average is for home price appreciation. Greer tends to be a great attraction for a lot of reasons because they have a great downtown, they have some school systems that people really love and want to get into, they've got great job opportunities as well. In Greenville, of course, you've got the charm of downtown. But I will remind everyone that that isn't all of Greenville. There are places that are 20, 30 minutes outside of the city from a driving distance that have the city of Greenville on there. But overall, Greenville has a lot of attractions and a lot of value, and it's a place that people want to live, which has created a lot of home price appreciation. When we look at all five of those areas that I mentioned, it tends to be that there's a high demand and there's a lower amount of inventory. Piedmont is the only city where inventory was somewhat comparable to its 2022 numbers. The rest of them are around 60% of the inventory levels that we saw in 2022. So again, there's a high demand and a low supply, which is really creating those price points going up. There was only one city that had 5% plus appreciation, and that was Simpsonville. Simpsonville has a lot of attractions. Simpsonville has a downtown. Part of Simpsonville leads into the Five Forks area. So there's been great growth in that area, and it's a great commuter city to come into downtown Greenville. Our next bucket was 3% plus. The two areas that were 3% plus were Fountain Inn and Traveler's Rest. Both of them are very different in overall price point. Traveler's Rest is overall the highest average price point area, and it tends to have the least amount of inventory. 
And because it has such high price points, it's appreciating at the market average. It's not exceeding it like the other areas, but because those prices are already so much higher, that percentage gain is a large amount of equity. It's just not as much on a percentage standpoint. With Fountain Inn, we've seen there's been a lot of development, a lot of growth. Fountain Inn has seen tremendous growth since about 2018. And what we're seeing is now it's coming a little bit closer towards the market average. Our last place that I want to mention actually was in a decline. It was a negative 2.5%. And that was Malden. I was actually kind of shocked because Malden has Bridgeway Station, which is currently in development, which so many people are so excited about. And Malden is doing so much as a city to really create this downtown, create this great feel, bring a lot of uh, industry and restaurants to the area. So I was a little bit taken back when I looked at the numbers. As I dug in deeper, what I actually found is that in 2022, there were a lot of new construction neighborhoods, even townhouses and single family homes that sold in Malden. There's been significantly less sales, actually 50% of the sales that we saw in 2022 and 2023, and there haven't been as many new construction homes. So when I took out all the new construction homes and I just looked at single family to compare single family to single family, Malden was actually up 2.5%, so very close there to the market average. But if I added everything back in again, it's a negative 2.5%. It really just had to do with the fact of what properties were selling in 22 versus 23. It is something to think about because even at 2.5%, Malden has had the least amount of home price appreciation. I think we will see Malden have a lot of great home price appreciation in the upcoming years, especially as Bridgeway Station is fully developed and it becomes the attraction that everyone believes that it will be. So I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that homes are the least affordable that they've been since 1984, but there still are a lot of buyers out there. Rent has increased substantially. A lot of first time home buyers are wanting to get into a home. A lot of them are resorting to new construction houses. The reason they're doing so is because the new construction builders are offering a lot of incentives, including interest rate buy downs, which helps so much on that affordability index, making it more affordable for a lot of home buyers to get into a new construction home than a resale property. And we're still seeing a lot of home price appreciation, and I think we will continue to see that because even though interest rates are continuing to rise, what it's doing is it's actually lowering the amount of available inventory because sellers are hesitant to put their home on the market right now, knowing that they're going to substantially increase their monthly payment if they buy a house for the same price that they sell their current one for because over 70% of Americans have less than a 4% interest rate. So if someone's trading in their sub 4% interest rate for around a 7% interest rate, that could have a dramatic impact on their overall monthly mortgage payment. That has created a really big gridlock effect and lowered the amount of homes that we have for sale. And it's created more of a sprawl here in our local area where people are moving outside of these nine places that I mentioned to further out areas. And that's created a lot of growth in those particular areas as well. So overall, I think that we're gonna to continue to see home prices increase. And if interest rates do decline, I think they're gonna increase substantially more than what we're seeing currently because there are a lot of buyers who are wanting to wait out this market. There's a lot of unique elements to this market. There's a lot of things to think through and everyone has a different situation. If there are any questions that I can answer for you to help make sense of this market and to help come up with a custom strategy that works best for you, feel free to reach out to me. All my contact information is down in the description below.